بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سائڈ نمبر ون کیسے نمبر ٹو دا نیم آف دا سبجیکٹ از اسسمنٹ اینڈ اویلویشن آف اسپیشل اسٹوڈنٹس اینڈ پروگرامس کیسے ون میں بھی جو جو نوٹس ریکارڈ ہوئے اور جو کیسے ٹو میں ریکارڈ اس میں ہونے جا رہے ہیں یہ جو میڈم ہمیرا نے دو فرسٹ ٹو چیپٹرز جو کہ کورس آؤٹ لائن کے فرسٹ چیپٹر کو کور کرتے ہیں ان کے نوٹس دیے تھے یہ لیکچر اس میں سے ریکارڈ ہو رہے ہیں تو کیسے نمبر ون کی سائڈ نمبر ٹو کے لاسٹ میں ہم پہنچے تھے ٹیم اپروچ پہ تو میڈیکل پرسنل کو ہم اس میں ڈسکس کر رہے تھے ٹیم اپروچ کو اس میں دیکھتے ہیں پہ کیا ہے آل میڈیکل انفارمیشن شوڈ بی ریپورٹیڈ سو دا ایجوکیشنل امپلیکیشن آر کلیئر ڈیٹا فارم اسسمنٹ اینڈ کلاس روم پرفارمنس مسٹ بی کنسیڈرڈ بائی دی ٹیم ان لائٹ آف اینی میڈیکل پرابلم اب تین اپروچ میں نیکسٹ ہے سوشل کیریئر نیڈ پرسنل سوشل ورکرز اینڈ کاؤنسلر پرووائڈ انفارمیشن اباؤٹ دی سوشل اینڈ ایموشنل اسٹیٹس اینڈ کیریئر ووکیشنل پلاننگ آف دی اسٹوڈنٹ سوشل ورک سروسز ان اسکولس انکلوڈ پریپیئرنگ آف سوشل اور ڈیولپمنٹل ہسٹری گروپ اینڈ انڈیویژل کاؤنسلنگ ود دا چائلڈ اینڈ فیملی ورکنگ وتھ پرابلم ان اے چائلڈ لیونگ سچویشن دیٹ افیکٹ ایڈجسٹمنٹ ان اسکول اینڈ موبیلائزنگ اسکول اینڈ کمیونٹی ریسورسز The assessment procedures used by social workers include interviews and home visits, data gathered regarding a student's background, home life and values can help the team interpret other assessment data. Social workers may also assist team members, particularly parents, in identifying goals and strategies for action at home and in the community. Counselors also help in the area of emotional development counseling services according to PL 94-142 may be provided by a variety of professionals including social workers, psychologists, guidance counselors and vocational rehabilitation counselors. Counselors use both formal and informal procedures and concentrate on the emotional and behavioral problems of the student and sometimes of other family members along with career and vocational areas. Because of their in-depth involvement, counselors can add emotional and career vocational dimensions to the student group. profile. Data from counseling may indicate the need for specific goals or shape decisions about placement or instructional strategies such as peer, tutoring and voca- vocational training. And now the next is motor development personnel. The information about the motor development of the student may be obtained from the adaptive physical education teachers, physical therapists and occupational therapists. In addition, the school nurse or a physician such as an orthopedic surgeon may also contribute medical information about motor disabilities. The adaptive physical education teacher is involved with the instruction of handicapped students requiring special physical education programs and can provide information about the student's motor abilities. Teachers, psychologists and others may also have input about the student's gross, G-R-O-S-S, gross and fine motor behavior. In some cases, motor disabilities may be related to other kinds of problems such as writing words, adaptive physical education teachers, specify goals for the student, 
and assist team members in programming for motor needs. Physical and occupational therapists also contribute information. Some authors distinguish physical therapists as concerned with gross motor development. In contrast to occupational therapists who work with fine motor development, both kinds of therapists use specialized assessment procedures. Their data may be supplemented by results of interviews or experiences of other team members. Along with reporting on curriculum related to vocational career development, teachers can pro provide information on behavior and demands in motor skills. Parents may also have useful data. The IEP contains goals in all these areas if necessary and allows the therapist to suggest strategies useful in the development of better motor coordination of realistic career goals. And now the next is other personnel. This uh, last team approach is other personnel. Occasionally, team members other than those just described are needed to present important information about the student. Tutors or paraprofessionals aid, so paraprofessional aides working closely with the student may provide insight into strengths and weaknesses. Members of the community such as employers or supervisors may be able to give the team a better understanding of realistic vocational goals. Other family members such as grandparents can sometimes supplement input from the parents and students. The purpose of the team approach is to assess, assemble all the information necessary for educational decision making through members combined expertise. The team may involve only educators and the parents or it may extend to all the disciplines. A team is made up of only necessary members. Teams generally require representatives from only some of the disciplines. Only in rare cases would all the disciplines participate. The team should be kept as small as possible to make parents feel comfortable and encourage their participation. PL 94-142 requires that team decisions take into account several areas of student functioning if those areas are pertinent, P-E-R-T-I-N-E-N-T, -E -E pertinent to the educational needs of the student. Certain members take primary responsibility for information in certain areas. Any team member may provide additional information. Now, if we look back to the team approach, we discussed the first time school personnel, then parents and students, then school support personnel, then medical personnel, then social career needs personnel, so motor development personnel or last may other personnel. So you sub milk your team approach ke topic ko cover karte hai. And next second chapter start ho gaya hai. Uske start mein hai decisions to be made. This may legal decisions or instructional decisions aate hai jo ke already a case it may record ho chukhe hai. So our next topic dekhte hai which is steps in assessment. Test assessment practices for Exceptional students are regulated by a combination of federal and state laws and professionals believe about good practices. The steps shown in table are generally followed in an assessment incorporating legal requirements, common practices and useful strategies. This table ko hum baad mein discuss karte hai. This sequence helps answer the main assessment questions on special education eligibility and instructional needs. 
the case of William, a seven year old with behavioral disorder. अब एक विलियम एक बच्चे का नाम है जिसकी मिसाल को हम थ्रू आउट इस स्टेप में लेकर चलेंगे क्योंकि हमें हेल्प करेगा स्टेप्स ऑफ असेसमेंट को समझने में उसकी प्रॉब्लम क्या है कि उसको बिहेवियर डिसऑर्डर है विल इलिस्ट्रेट दिस प्रोसेस फर्दर ऑन द चैप्टर द असेसमेंट प्रोसेस इज स्ट्रॉन्गली इन्फ्लुएंस बाय फेडरल स्टेट एंड लोकल प्रोसीजर PL 94 142 guarantees are free and appropriate public education for all handicapped individuals with disabilities. Children with disabilities are free and appropriate public education for all handicapped individuals with disabilities. Children with disabilities are free and appropriate public education for all handicapped individuals with disabilities. Children with disabilities are free and appropriate public education for all handicapped individuals with disabilities. Children with disabilities are free and appropriate public education for all handicapped individuals with disabilities. Children with disabilities are free and appropriate public education for all handicapped individuals with disabilities. Children with disabilities are free and appropriate public education for all handicapped individuals with disabilities. Children with disabilities are free and appropriate public education for all handicapped individuals with disabilities. Children with disabilities are free and appropriate public education for all handicapped individuals with disabilities. Children with disabilities are free and appropriate public education for all handicapped individuals with disabilities. Children with disabilities are free and appropriate public education for all handicapped individuals with disabilities. Children with disabilities are free and appropriate public education for all handicapped individuals with disabilities. Children with disabilities are free and appropriate public education for all handicapped individuals with disabilities. Children with disabilities are free PL 94-142 mandates many of the particulars involved in meeting the needs of exceptional students. A large part of the law and its subsequent regulation concern as assessment. Sorry, concern assessment. The gathering, interpretation, and use of data concerning exceptional students. are regulated string stringently s t e r i n g e n t l y string gently this guarantees use of a valid basis in making decisions and protects the due process rights of students and parents in terms of assessment pl 94142 specifies the following identification of the handicap procedural safeguard non discrimination assessment placement in the least restrictive environment confidentiality of information and the development of the iep states must conform to these regulations to receive federal aid for education of handicapped students pl 94142 has established due process procedures to ensure the rights of exceptional persons and their parents Turnbull T U R N B U D L L Turnbull Strickland and Brantley 1982 define due process as a procedure which seeks to ensure the fairness of educational decisions and the accountability of both the professionals and parents making these decisions. Its correction is on page number 10. Due process protects the consumers of the assessment process. For example, informing parents of the need to test the child and involving them in making decisions based upon the data. However, such regulations are often general and permit state and local educational agencies to develop specific procedures. Local school districts must decide how they will organize the assessment process. what they will use for nomen culture n o m e n c l a t u r e n form nomen culture and form and so on such flexibility results in considerable procedural variations within a state and in the development of many sound but non mandated strategies नेक्स्ट स्टेप बाय स्टेप डिफाइन करने से पहले हम टेबल फॉर्म में देख लेते हैं ये हमें बहुत हेल्प करेगा ऑन दी होल इन तमाम स्टेप्स को समझने में दे आर नाइन स्टेप्स इन दी स्टेप्स ऑफ असेसमेंट वन इज द क्रीनी द स्टूडेंट इज आइडेंटिफाइड एज हैविंग अ पॉसिबल हैंडीकैपिंग कंडीशन रिलेटेड टू स्कूल परफॉर्मेंस प्रॉब्लम नंबर टू राफल द स्टूडेंट इज रेफर्ड टू स्पेशल एजुकेशन फॉर असेसमेंट एंड हिज her parents informed the third step of assessment is design of individualized assessment plan iap stated assessment questions are used to guide the assessment the procedure the plan and timeline are designated number 4 parental permission for assessment parents agree in writing to the assessment number 5 administration 
scoring and interpretation. The appropriate formal and informal diagnostic instruments are used by the assessment team. And now the sixth step of assessment is reporting results. The assessment data are interpreted and discussed with the students, parents and other team members. Seventh step of assessment is deciding eligibility for special education. The team examines the students' needs and assessment data in relationship to eligibility criteria. And now the second last step of assessment is design of individualized education plan, IEP. The team establishes goals and objectives of the student's program, including the amount of time in the least restrictive environment, LRE, and a timeline for program evaluation. Number nine is, this is the last step of assessment, parental agreement to the IEP. The student's parents indicate their agreement with all elements of the IEP, including placement in special education. ये जो अभी steps discuss किए nine steps ये table form में थे अब हम इनको detail से पढ़ते हैं कि ये steps इन steps में हम क्या क्या करते हैं number one is screening according to PL 94142 state education agencies are responsible for identifying locating and evaluating all handicapped students the state department works with public and private schools and other agencies to screen student populations. Screening and identification takes many forms. Both mass media and printed literature are used to make the general public, especially parents, aware of the needs of exceptional people, the symptoms of handicaps and the available services in the state or region are stressed. A school district or other agency must choose reliable but time-saving procedures to identify the most needy students. Generally, the screening program includes a variety of procedures. Teachers and other personnel are alerted to signs of various exceptionalities. Lists of warning signs are distributed and teachers are informed of the fed, uh, Informed is a referral process. Teachers may be periodically asked to complete checklists or rating forms that help in identify suspected students. Students may be observed in the classroom and school records consulted, especially the results of group testing and report cards. Classroom teachers are also expected to modify the instructional and environmental demands on the student to identify obvious positive C A U S A T I V E positive factors for problems. Individual schools often have child study teams that coordinate these activities. However, when the teacher's information and the results of modifications continue to indicate the possibility of a handicapping condition. Students are referred for further assessment. They can also be referred for by parents, tutors, physicians or anyone else concerned. And this was the first step of assessment and now the second step which is reference. Once a student is formally referred for special education assessment, a chain of events is set in motion. School districts usually have an individual of, or team that receives raffles from schools in the district. Or in the case of new students from other agencies or individuals, a team form and processes are referred by alerting the students' parents and by gathering all available data. PL 94-142 requires that parents be informed of any raffle in writing. They must also know whenever any testing for possible special education program changes will take place. Parents have the right to participate in the assessment and in subsequent decisions about the child's program. They must give their permission for assessment and are to be given an explanation of the results and any proposed action. 
they can ask for an independent evaluation. In fact, all school records and request a due process hearing whenever they disagree with a proposed action, such as placement in special education. Handicapped students have the right to be represented in assessment and other matters. When no parents or guardian can be identified, when their whereabouts are unknown, or when the student is a ward of the state, the state can assign a surrogate parent. S U W R O G A T E. Surrogate का मतलब होता है नेमुल बदल. यानी अगर parents जो हैं वो मौजूद नहीं हैं, तो parents के नेमुल बदल कोई इस तरह से तलाश किया जाए ताकि बच्चे की जो है assessment में मदद मिल सके. यानी replacement parents की जगह पे कोई इस तरह का कोई बंदा हो कि बच्चों की असेसमेंट में कोई रुकावट ना बने द पर्सन चूजन मस्ट बी क्वालिफाइड टू सर्व द बेस्ट इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द चाइल्ड ही और शी रिप्रेजेंट द स्टूडेंट इन ऑल द मैटर्स मैं एंड कैन नॉट बी इम्प्लाइड बाय द स्कूल डिस्ट्रिक्ट अ प्लान फॉर एन असेसमेंट मस्ट ऑल्सो बी डिवेलप्ड टू प्रोवाइड डायरेक्शन एंड कोऑर्डिनेट द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ असेसमेंट पर्सनल दिस प्लान मस्ट बी कम्प्रीहेंसिव एंड इंडिविजुअलाइज and now the third step of the assessment is design of the individualized assessment plan iap educational assessment of the handicapped students must be systematic a plan of action helps assessment proceed purposefully in this step that plan is called the individualized assessment plan iap although it is not a legal requirement it has Meet each student's unique needs and individualize the assessment process. Standard assessment batteries are neither appropriate nor useful for this. Furthermore, the assessment design must be prepared in relationship to the total process of serving handicapped students. The assessment is linked to decisions concerning instructional design, placement, and other factors. facets f a c e t s facets of the educational program the iap must reflect the requirements of these other facets particular care must be taken to maintain educational relevance an iap describes the steps and procedures in the assessment as part of the total iap the assessment must reflect the reason for rational and much yield systematically organized data the iap primarily concentrates on relating other areas of assessment to educational matters the three main dimensions of educational concerns are number one the student's skill and skills and abilities number two the task he or she is having difficulty with and number three is the learning environment However the IAP can also be can also reflect the student's physical social and cultural characteristics these correlate c o r r r e l a t s t e s these correlates may better explain a student's educational needs for example a student may have a severe reading disability partially due to a vision disorder an iap can be developed by using a set of questions that direct the choice of the assessment procedure the questions are arranged from general to specific producing in increasingly detailed data by organizing the iap with the, with a set of assessment questions the team can prevent the waste of precious time energy and resources away V A G U E was it is that you a very general question such as what's the student's learning problem usually leads to an unfocused assessment and ambiguous A M B I G U O U S ambiguous result more precise more precise questions help ensure that needed data will be gathered for example the question What is the student's current level of performance in oral reading and specific mastered and unmastered food attacks, attack skills? Provides 
direction and suggests the choice of certain tests that proceed and the exclusion of the other. In this case, a standardized test of oral reading skills yielding an index of reading proficiency and a criterion reference test of food word attack skills may be appropriate. The IAP may um, imply formal and or informal procedures depending upon the question. The questions may concern any subject matter area. They may relate to academic subjects, reading, social emotional concerns, self concept or the physical environment of the classroom, teaching plan. The type of data needed may dictate both the procedure and the particular kind of result. For example, norm reference tests may answer a question about the level of proficiency but do not describe specific skill deficit. A parent interview rather than a formal test would be used to gather data about the student's medical and family background. The following specific considerations should guide the design of the IAP and choice of assessment procedures. Number one, the procedures should, should gather the kind of information needed and should yield useful results, such as normative scores or a specific list of mastered and unmastered skills. Number two, procedures should be of the highest technical quality. Number three, the procedures should be considered in the context of a team effort, avoid duplication and specify roles of various team members. For example, one professional may screen for potential problems in hearing so the student can be referred to another professional, such as an audiologist. Number four, choose more in-depth specific assessment only for identified problem areas. Number five, validate assessments by confirming results in the student's actual learning environment. Number six, procedures should be multifaceted, accounting for the assessment of three main dimensions, the student, the learning task, and the learning environment. The procedures should be arranged from general to specific and related to one another. Thus, finer and finer levels of information can be gathered. These policies influence both the content and process of assessment. They are quality controls to accurately, fully and fairly assess students. Decisions affecting educational and other programs are tested upon these results. Students must not be undiagnosed this diagnosed as having a disability based on inaccurate procedures. And now the fourth step of assessment is parental permission for assessment. Once the goals for an assessment and the procedures to be used become clear, parental permission must be obtained before testing may begin. Parents must give their written permission for the initial assessment for a possible handicapping condition. The written notice must be given a reasonable time before the school is purposes to do the assessment and must include an explanation of the various procedural safeguards, a clear explanation of the reason for assessment and a description of the procedures to be used. PL 94142 has some additional Stipulations, S T I P U I A T I O N S. Stipulations come up with a demand as a condition. The request for permission and all related communi communications with the parents must be clearly presented to them with the documentation that it was done. All communication must be written in the native language of the parents. Forms may be translated or the parents are illiterate. The written material can be read to them and their signature or mark requested. Now the fifth step of assessment is administration, scoring and interpretation of the assessment. General manuals accompanying formal standardized tests also contain specific instructions. Informal procedures such as interviews and observations are also governed by principles of good practices. Practice. Many of the points 
previously made about CL 94142 regulations are also applicable to the administration, scoring and interpretation of rest and other techniques. And now the sixth step of assessment is reporting results. The team members prepare and then share the results of their individual assessment. Scores and other data are only meaningful when combined into a full student profile. Each participant should attend the post-assessment conference to report and discuss the results. Key figures at this meeting are the students, parents and perhaps the student. Parents of assessed students must have the results reported to them whether or not the student is ultimately found to be eligible for special education services. The results are presented at a meeting with the professionals involved in the assessment. Parents are to serve as active team members. Parents must be clearly told if the student has a handicap and is eligible for special education services. If so, the components of an individualized education program are developed. TL 94142 also sets forth that parents must be informed of their right to have access to all school records concerning their child's identification, assessment and placement in special education. Frequently, parents wish to examine the records to better understand the school's basis for concern. A school system must respond promptly to such a request in, more, in no more than just 45 days. If the parents have any question about information in the records, the school system must also supply an explanation. If the parents feel the statements in the records are inaccurate, misleading or violate the child's rights to privacy, they can ask the school system to amend them. The school system must then respond within a reasonable amount of time. If the school refuses the parent's request, it must inform the parents and advise them of their right to a hearing. Case number three, slide number one. The name of the subject is assessment and evaluation of special students and programs. Case number two, the slide number two, the last we have discussed the reporting results. वो भी कंप्लीट नहीं हुआ था उसी को लेके चलते हैं अभी रिपोर्टिंग रिजल्ट्स जो है वो स्टेप्स ऑफ असेसमेंट का सिक्स स्टेप है छठा स्टेप है उसका असेसमेंट का आगे देखते हैं क्या है फर्दर मोर दिस रिकॉर्ड्स आर मेंटेन्ड बाय सिक्स लाइक रेगुलेशंस ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी पेरेंट्स मस्ट बी इंफॉर्म्ड ऑफ द प्रोसीजर्स टू स्टोर डिस्क्लोज टू अनदर पर्सन रिटेन और डिस्ट्रॉय एनी रिकॉर्ड्स कंसर्निंग द चाइल्ड Parents must give their permission before information concerning their child is given to anyone not authorized within the school system. Anyone other than the parents and authorized school personnel examining the records must list their name and the, the date and intent. Let the school system no longer needs the information for educational purposes 
it must inform the parent. At the request, the records may be destroyed or kept permanently. Otherwise, only a limited set of information such as the student's name, address, and grade grade is retained. Retained. By law, the school system must provide information about where parents can obtain an independent educational evaluation. If requested, the parents have the right to an independent evaluation at public expense if they disagree with the school system's evaluation and the school and the school system does not or cannot substantiate its own evaluation. If parents initiate an evaluation, the results must be considered by the school system in making any decision about special education services and may be represented at hearing at any hearing on the matter. And now the next step of assessment, the eighth step, which is, is this, this is very important step of assessment, which is design of the individualized education program, which is IEP, we can say. The team now turns its attention to instructional matters and designs our individualized education program IEP for the students. The participants at the IEP conference are a school system report representative to supervise that proceedings, the student teacher or teachers, one or both parents, the student is appropriate, and a member of the team that performs the assessment or someone knowledgeable about the procedures used and the results obtained. The teacher may be a regular classroom teacher, special educator, or speech language pathologist. Depending upon the nature of the student's educational needs, the parents particularly must be encouraged to attend and participate in designing the IEP in the following way. Parents must, number one, parents must be notified in advance of the purpose, time, location and participants of the meeting. The meeting should be scheduled at a maturity time, agreed upon time and place. Number two, if the parents cannot attend, other means of communication, for example, Content telephone calls should be used. Number three, if parents do not attend in spite of request, the cause of all efforts to encourage their presence, sorry, presence must be kept. Number four, at the time meet, at the meeting, every effort must be made to ensure that parents understand the proceedings. This may involve the use of interpreter, interpreter, sorry, interpreter. It needs to stimulate parental participation. Pa uh, number six, when parents must receive a copy of the IEP at their request, it should be in their native language. Professionals and parents make decisions about the IEP based upon the data gathered in the assessment. While assessment results can be reported in many ways and used for a variety of purposes. The IEP offers a common format for the plans of all exceptional students. The IEP is to certain is to contain the following basic features. Number one, a statement of the child's present levels of educational performance. Number two, the st a statement of annual goals including short term instructional objectives. Number three, a statement of the specific special education and related services to be provided to the child and the extent to which the child will be able to participate in regular educational programs. Number four is the projected dates for initiation of services and the anticipated duration of the services. And number fifth is appropriate objective criteria and evaluation procedures and schedules of determining on at least an annual basis whether the short-term instructional objectives are being achieved, PL 9442. The IEP meeting must occur within 30 calendar days of a determination that the student is handicapped and in need of special services. The IEP must be developed before the student begins to receive special services and must be implemented without any undue delay after the meeting. Furthermore, a similar meeting must be held at least annually to re-examine the appropriateness of the IEP and revise if it necessary. And revise it if necessary. 
The team needs many kinds of assessment data to develop the components of the IEP, the full array, AWR, AY of educational assessment procedures may be used to make these program decisions. Number one has component IEP ka current performance level. The first step in the in writing an IEP is to specify the students their present levels of educational performance. The IEP team reviews the information gathered by the assessment team and collects more information if necessary. The team then chooses the specific curriculum areas for the IEP and describes present levels of performance for each. In William's case, as we throughout William ko discuss karte hain. In William's case, his performance is average and in keeping with his dis disability, sorry, and keeping with his abilities, except in the areas of classroom behavior and arithmetic. Number two component of IEP is annual goals. The IEP team considers the students' present levels of educational performance for trends and weaknesses in setting annual goals for each curriculum area. Teachers, therapists and other team members abstract the priority goals from the assessment data. Useful assessment information includes the student's current rate of educational progress and past history. Annual goals should be stated so the rate of student progress required by the goals is commensurate with ability. Results of the psychological report and input from educators, parents and others who have worked with the student are particularly useful in projecting these expectation levels. The findings of physicians and mental health specialists may influence the number and nature of the goals chosen. For example, a student's general health, vision or hearing may be such that limits must be put upon demand at school and at home. Annual goals are usually general, but the degree of specificity in these goals statements seems to vary, v -a -r -y, vary, vary with each locale, L-O-C-A-L-E, locale. Some examples of commonly used goals include the following. Number one, improve oral reading ability. Number two, increase reading comprehension to the 2.4 grade level. Number three, William will be promote, sorry, prompt, P-R-O-M-T-T, prompt in reporting to class and beginning work. And last is assist him in computing and writing the sum of a one digit and a two digit number. Each student's goal must be prioritized. The most severe deficits noted in the assessment are the first concerns, second the priorities of the student, parents, teachers and others must be considered, third the age of the student may be a factor. For example, the handicapped adolescent may need vocational preparation more than training in basic skills. And now the third component of IEP is short term objective. The IEP team attempts to bridge the gap between the student's present levels and the projected goals with short term instructional objectives. Task analysis breaks down the annual goals into teachable subcomponents or objectives. Curriculum guides and other published sources may also be used to locate instructional objectives. Team members can draw upon their own experience with the student to suggest more specific objectives to attain a goal. Parents are often aware of opportunities of, for additional practice at home and in the community. Classroom teachers, vocational teachers and specialists may assist by pinpointing necessary objectives. The objectives can involve activities at home as well as in school. William's annual goals in the area of behavior call for activities by teachers and his parents 
as well as services from the school counselor. The fourth component of IEP is type of education program and or related services. When goals and objectives are stated, the IEP team decides on the type of special education and related services required. In addition, the team determines how much the students will participate in the regular classroom. The IEP designates the special educators that provide the services. In addition, classroom teachers are frequently involved in the program for mildly handicapped students in the regular classroom. Counselors, speech language pathologists and other specialists are also designated when appropriate. The team must make these designations cooperatively to coordinate the assignment of responsibilities. In the case of mildly handicapped students, regular classroom teachers and special educators must specify their areas of mutual responsibility. In William's case, a special education teacher consultant will be assigned to his case, sorry, sorry, to his second grade teacher and the counselor will also see William regularly. And now the fifth component of IEP is placement in the least restrictive environment, this is LRE, we can say it. The team must also address the issue of least restrictive placement to the maximum extent appropriate. Handicapped students must be educated in the same classroom as their non-handicapped peers. However, each model for delivery of special services has pros and cons. From the point of view of time in the regular classroom, the teacher consultant and Teacher consultant and itinerant, I T I M E R A N T. Itinerant models are the better options. However, the specific students' needs and other considerations may move the IEP team to choose a more descriptive model. What makes the process of choosing how to deliver services particularly valid is that a team of involved and informed individuals, including parents and the students themselves. Discuss the issue based on the student's needs and family preferences. For example, as illustrated in the example IEP, William will not need to leave the regular classroom except to visit the counselor for two hours a week. A teacher consultant will come into his classroom and assist his teacher or him as needed. William's mother will also help accomplish some objectives. And now the sixth component of IEP is beginning and ending days. A timeline must also be established by the IEP team designating beginning and ending dates. The whole team should discuss the features of a student's program that may depend upon one another. Teachers, therapists and others must judge when they will begin work on certain goals and how long the instruction summit or therapy may take. Everyone on the team should, should S-Y-N-C-H-R-O-N-I-Z-E Financialize their efforts to accomplish the goals by the designated time. Williams IEP meeting was held in January at the beginning of the new term. His services begin immediately in February 1986 and he will continue until the school year's end. And now the sixth component of IEP that is evaluation criteria and annual review. The IEP team must also set up a plan of evaluation of student progress that includes a schedule. The team members with the responsibility for accomplishing the IEP goals describe the procedures to be used for the evaluation. The evaluation plan will serve to guide both ongoing monitoring of the program and the annual review. As all the statement procedures this sorry. Two elements of evaluation formative and summative are involved. Formative evaluation is ongoing. Hum jab IEP ki uh, evaluation karte hai, to both rikos se karte hai, summative or ek formative. Formative होता है सालाना तो इसकी नहीं जाएगा और formative होता है जो वक्त-वक्त में 
कैंप के दौरान जो है वो टीचर्स लेते रहते हैं साथ साथ उनको देखते हैं यहाँ पे टू एलिमेंट्स ऑफ एवेल्युएशन फॉर्मेटिव एंड समेटिव आर इन्वॉल्व फॉर्मेटिव एवेल्युएशन इज ओन गोइंग इट इज परफॉर्म वर्ल्ड आई ई पी इज बीज इम्प्लीमेंटेड एंड मैर स्टूडेंट प्रोग्रेस मेक वर्ल्ड अकम्पलिशिंग दस गोल्स एंड ऑब्जेक्टिव डायरेक्ट एंड फ्रीक्वेंट मैयर्स ऑफ द प्रोग्राम आर इम्प्रेटिव कमेटिव प्रोसीजर इंक्लूड द यूज ऑफ क्राइटेरियन रेफरेंस टेस्टिंग डेली बिहेवियरल ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड नोम एल ओ जी एस दिस ऑन गोइंग एवेल्यूएशन सप्लाईज इन्फॉर्मेशन फॉर द इमीजिएट रिविजन ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शनल प्रोसीजर इज नेसेसरी एंड नाउ समेटिव एवेल्यूएशन समेटिव एवेल्यूएशन इज परफॉर्म After the IEP is implemented and the remote trace the effects of the program, non-reference tests, criterion reference tests, interviews with students and of parents, and observations may all be used. Different kinds of data are needed to make decisions about program continuation, revision, or termination. Comparative data from non-reference tests as well as continually. Continually gathered data may be necessary to confirm a student's continued eligibility for special education. Involved professionals, the students, parents, and the students, if appropriate, will use the evaluation data to decide whether to continue, modify, or terminate the special program. Data are examined to determine if the goals and objectives set forth in the IEP have been accomplished. If they have been achieved, and no further special education needs are apparent, the student's program is terminated. However, if the goals and objectives have not been totally accomplished, or if additional ones need to be achieved, then the IEP is revised and the student continues to receive special services. Now the school system is responsible to offer these services. PR 94-142 does not necessarily hold it accountable if the student falls short of goals and objectives. However, the school system must document that every effort has been made to achieve them. If the student does not achieve as expected, the parents may request any necessary revisions of the IEP. For example, they may request an increase in the amount of special education services. This evaluation requirement also determines whether handicapped students continue to need the special education and related service, specialized services that may isolate, isolate them from normal peers. Review is intended to prevent endless placement in special education and to guarantee that students who leave the regular classroom for special services return as soon as possible. Furthermore, the annual review is an effort to maintain a sense of direction in the students' program, as illustrated in the sample IEP. Williams teachers and parents will re-evaluate re the IEP in June 1986. His behavior will be monitored regularly and post and post testing of arithmetic skills to show. अब ये तो थे IEP के सात कंपोनेंट्स जिसका हम देख लेते हैं इनका फिर ओवरव्यू ले लेते हैं पहला कंपोनेंट है ट्रेंड परफॉर्मेंस लेवल सेकंड वाज एनुअल गोल्स थर्ड शॉर्ट टर्म ऑब्जेक्टिव फोर्थ टाइप ऑफ एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम एंड और रिलेटेड सर्विसेज नंबर फिफ्थ प्लेसमेंट इन द लीस्ट रिस्ट्रिक्टिव एनवायरमेंट Number six, building and ending date, and number seven is evaluation criteria and annual review. ये तो थे IEP के अंदर और IEP जो है वो eight step था step six assessment का. Now we are going to discuss the last step of assessment that is parental agreement to the IEP. The students' parents are asked to approve the IEP and the placement of the child in special education by signing the IEP or another form. PR 94-142 grants them a number of rights and options. They have the right to approve or disapprove placement in services for exceptional conditions. 
to take mild mental retardation and psychopathic learning disabilities. They must also decide if they attend placement in a certain type of service, such as a special class or a resource room. If the parents disagree with professional recommendation, they are entitled to an impartial due process hearing. But if the parents refuse to agree to the special placement, the school district can also request a hearing. Parents must sign the IEP and grant permission to place a child in services for handicapped students. The area of exceptionality is specified. All regulations for prior notice, clarity and a, a, appropriateness of communication and documented effort to inform and solicit C, sorry, S O L I C I T and solicit parental consent go on this activity. When parents and the school system cannot agree upon the initial assessment findings for placement, the nature of the placement in special education or any other, other aspect. PR 94 142 provides for an impartial due process hearing. The parents and the school system may first attempt to use the mediation to solve their differences. However, if this fails, an impartial hearing officer is appointed for a list of qualified individuals. For the purpose of these hearings, the parents and or the school system can be advised by legal school system. Sorry, advised by legal counsel or other qualified advisors. In fact, the school system must inform parents of the available availability of free or low cost legal services. At the hearing, parents and other sorry, parents and their counsel can present evidence, confront C O N F R O N T, confront and cross examine and call witness witnesses. All evidence to be presented must be disclosed to the parents at least five days before the hearing. Parents may also request a verb a verb time recording of the hearing. The decision of this impartial hearing is final unless the parents and or the school district wish to appear sorry to appeal to the state department of education. In this in that case the state department of education reviews the hearing according to federal guidelines and makes a decision. If the parents and or the school system are not satisfied, they can take civil action. Such action can also be taken at any time. The law sets up timelines governing the expediency E F P E D I E N C Y. Expediency conducting both the impartial hearing and the state department review. During this period, the student remains in the current educational placement unless both the parents and the school system agree otherwise. Other demands on her time, including William's two-year-old sister, she will not be able to help William with homework. She is confident that once her divorce from William's father is settled, much of William's confusion will disappear. She hopes the school counselor can help William adjust too. William's mother signs the IEP and gives her permission to special education placement. She is relieved that William will not be out of his classroom for a long period of time and his intellectual abilities are on a level with his peers. She hopes William improves by the time that they meet again to review the program in June. We have a case for assessment. Chimko have discussed here. Thank <laughs> you.